Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, very cool. No, this ain't it. Oh, I'm actually a big fan of this. <laughs> Help. Yes, big win. My eyes. Mm. Let's drink some coffee because we're going to need it today. Ableton Live 12 just came out and I have on purpose not participated in the beta and not looked at any single version up until now. I was kind of saving that for a special video and you're watching that video right now. I'm going to open it up together and you're going to see how someone who already has pretty much a workflow in Ableton Live 11, what I think are the, the strengths and what I think are the weaknesses. Let's hop into it and immediately just get some first impressions. You have successfully authorized live. Let's go. Whoa. Okay. This is actually uh, a pretty big update. There's a lot of visual things changed. I don't know if improved, probably improved. Uh, a lot of changes and see what they've got installed for us here rounded little corners on the on the volume bars i don't know why that jumps out at me but that's such a i don't know it's nice it's nice i like it simple parts of the interface that i like these colors freaking amazing do we still have the rms meter in there as well a little bit yeah yeah there is still the rms in the peak value I notice immediately up here that you've got scale snapping for your entire project, which makes perfect sense because why would every clip need to have its own scale? You probably want your whole project to have a scale. Yeah, nice. What's this? Oh, all oh right. The biggest thing that I wasn't even realizing is that we have the volume mixers on the arrangement view. Hang on. So what happens when I hit tab? Okay, we go back to session view which is where all the clips live like that. And then this is the view where I'm going to live, to be honest. This is this is my stuff. Ableton Live 12, where have you been? Oh, my life. OK, yes, 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 yes. That's very cool. I want to look at some other things. Nice. I don't know what that means. Scanning plugins down here. Oh, it's still doing that. What's this thing? Waveform vertical zoom. Oh, nice. So that when we open up anything that's like audio like this and we want to look in, we can make everything smaller or larger without actually making it louder. Yes, that's a big quality of life improvement as well. And that's just an on off switch for that. Ah, the width and height buttons are here. That's cute. Instead of turning this on and off, I feel like it could be like um, normalize the wave view so that it's always just kind of big and bold. But okay, I like it. It's cool. So yeah, this behaves just like the mixer would in session view normally. That's actually super cool. I mean, this layout improvement, very, very, very nice. Now I hear that there's a big uh, change to how the browser works as well. And I see here that we've got in sounds, we've got all these filters. That's all fine by me. Oh, what's this? Oh, it's telling me what's open. Oh, quality of life. Love it. Oh, and I can have them both open like this. <gasps> oh, so instead of doing shift tab to alternate between one or the other like this, that's cool. But if you want, you can have them both open here on the bottom. That's also quality of life. Oh, and you can turn off the mixer like this. Okay, so you can have maximum screen real estate like this or bring it in and there's probably keyboard shortcuts for each one of those. That's very cool. That is going on over here. Half a million analysis things left. Oh gosh, I don't know what that means. Cute little feature now is that if you, for example, hit A to show automation, right? Instead, you can hold down A and then it's do your little edit. And then when you let go, it latches back. So this is called momentary latching. Very cool. So that way you can just quickly open up automation for a second, do your little move and then let it go. Save yourself some time. Love that. The same goes for the B for draw mode. You just hold it down, let go, and then it's gone. So that way you don't need to switch between states all the time. You can just hold it, do your thing and let go. Nice, subtle, but awesome, awesome, awesome little update. Picasso over here. <laughs> okay, cool. So that works. Nice. Same for soloing. You can just hold down to solo and let go. Oh, and so you select an area and then you hold down Z to zoom and Z to back and then you just let go and it goes back out. Z back out. Whoa, that's cool. Same for tab. You can just have a little peek at the other screen. Hop up, boop. Momentary latching. Cool feature. Going to explore that. There's the new synthesizer meld, which I think is probably worth its own video because synthesizer is like a feature rich thing that we can dive into. So you can now split MIDI notes by holding down E or if your Ableton keyboard is on, hold down shift and E and then you can just go blop, 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 blop. Ah, that's cool. We're going to get even more of these anima style trills. <laughs> Consciousness. That's a cool feature though. Super nice. Whoa, the undo is so snappy that I like undid loads. Okay. Whoa. 
if I just command e, e, it chops every single interval of the thing. That's crazy. Okay, so command E chops based on the current grid. So if I hold down command E and I press up and down arrows, I can divide into equal parts. So then I can just like, I can just start ramping up the intensity here. <laughs> That's dope, <laughs> nice. Okay, I get it. And then you can just join notes and reset it. Love that. Oh, there's a bunch of, what? A bunch of new MIDI tools. Where do I find that? MIDI effects? Oh, here, straight up in the MIDI clip, there's already effects built in, so you no longer have to drag things over. That's cool. There's an arpeggiator. Please tell me there's a step sequencer this time. Okay, but this is very cool. <gasps> Oh, okay, this deserves its own video. <laughs> okay, very cool. This is very techno-friendly stuff. Okay, I need to explore these and I need to do a whole video on these. This is so cool to have it right here and not have to mess around with separate inserts over here. Now, I swear to God, if this arpeggiator has not been turned into a step sequencer yet, I'm going to flip my lid. What is this? A style? A visual representation of the style? You were kidding me. You could have just, you could have just made these editable, no? Custom. No custom? We're still stuck with an arpeggiator that cannot mute individual steps, so it still isn't as good as Cthulhu. It does the exact same stuff as the previous version of Arpeggiator. They'll say that the interface has improved a bit, but all you needed to do was make these buttons, make this a little grid that we could edit and turn off various steps. Lads, no, this ain't it. That's just an, an illustration, a little gif. Come on, lads. <gasps> oh, and the swing amount is still these fixed amounts. Are you joking? Most disappointing upgrade ever. Honestly, if there's no step sequencer in this version of Ableton, I bet someone's gonna say it's here, right? This is essentially the step sequencer. And you're not entirely wrong. It's just that for beginners, this can be overwhelming. And having a simple step sequencer is so much fun to play with. This is super overwhelming to someone who's been producing for less than a few months. Oh, not happy about that. There's a reason why the 303 sequencer is so popular and why people go back to it so often and why it works so well is because there's limitations and within those limitations you can get very playful. These transform things are very cool though. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> oh God, stop. Oh no. Help. It just keeps adding stuff on top. I needed to like replace the thing I've already generated now. I need to figure these things out a bit. Okay, you just add it on individual thing, but then they stop being connected to the controls. But very fun, very, very fun, very intuitive, very playful. So that's cool. Ah, nice, here's a Euclidean generator. Super cool, especially for drums, right? But really for everything. I hope they involved the person who did the original Euclidean sequencer because it looks even very similar to that. So, I hope so. We can turn various layers off. That's fun. Command option M opens the mixer. Very cool. Shout out to Ableton for the accessibility upgrades. Inclusion is freaking cool. Nice one. Kudos to you. Sound similarity search apparently allows me to just find similar sounds to any particular sound. So here's a little rim shot. What is it suggesting? Oh, that's very good. Oh, that's very good. Whoa. Okay, I'm actually a big fan of this. What? Let's do a sound similarity search for this one. Yeah, kind of crispy organic snares. Okay, that's, oh, that's so cool. Oh, this is so comfortable. I'm dying from comfort. Uh, no, but really, what? Sound similarity search is the bomb. Oh, I'm gonna be doing this all day. 
Here, kind of a nine and nine clap. Let's do similarity search. Satisfying. Look at the buffering samples. <laughs> I can't quite keep up. So that's what this analysis thing is doing. That's why I have like more than half a million samples on my, on my hard drive. Okay, I guess that makes sense. <laughs> and you can do the same here in the drum rack by hitting this similarity. It's a very cool little icon, by the way. And then just swap through like this. So just find variations on the same sound and then lock. And then you can do it for all the different sounds. <gasps> very cool. That's such a fun way of randomizing. Ah, oh, yes, big win, big win, big win. Command option three shows the clip and command option four shows the device view. Cool, but shift tab is still very comfortable to just switch between the two. Similar to the groove pool, there's also a tuning pool thing here, tuning system, which is very cool for people who wanna do like microtonal stuff. I haven't really messed with that, so it's not really for me, but that's awesome that there's that opportunity here. Oh, the preferences menu has changed. Hasn't changed that much, seems fine. Scroll bars don't automatically appear anymore. Hmm, not sure I like that. I mean, I guess it's fine for me on Mac, but for other people, surely that should be an option. Angst, what the f- Ugh, my eyes. Ow, oh, what is this? <laughs> so Ableton Live 12, what's my gut feeling? Well, my gut feeling is immediately that I'm happy that I upgraded. They really made a very serious effort to bring the user interface to a completely new era in a way that's not trivial and that's definitely going to affect workflow. All the changes that I've seen were positive, honestly way better than I actually could have expected. It feels to me like this is the biggest upgrade that Ableton Live has had since I started producing and I'm genuinely excited by many of the changes that I'm seeing. I feel like the things that deserve deeper exploration are Meld and Roar. Meld, the synthesizer, and Roar, the distortion plugin. I think that's a different video than this one though. And then also the MIDI effects, because we've got a bunch of really creative MIDI effects. My big letdown here was the arpeggiator update, but I just feel like the visual update is not enough. Just adding one simple extra feature would have made it a complete Cthulhu killer, but at this point it's not there. But in the new MIDI generation options on the left side of the screen, I do feel like there's probably a lot of things that we can do that we couldn't do before. So I'm going to dig a bit deeper and see what I find there. Even something as simple as having these damn colors along the bottom is so satisfying and visually brings the whole interface kind of more in line with itself, makes it more aesthetic and, you know, I, I kind of find that important. Having the mixer section on screen here with the arrangement view, absolutely beautiful. Big, big, big fan of that. And so then at the end, what's my advice? Should you upgrade? Well, honestly, I think that not necessarily. I mean, I think that if you are still on Ableton Live 11 or 10 or even before, and it's doing everything that you want and money is tight, then this isn't super necessary. However, if you do spend a significant amount of time in Ableton and you are interested in some quality of life upgrades, an updated interface, then this will not be wasted money. Maybe try investing in this over your next VST. Out of curiosity, I'm just going to open the project that I was working on yesterday in Live 11. It's got about 100 tracks. Let's see what it does. Works very well. Ooh, and just switching envelopes here. Oh, quality of life. Yes, please. It was driving me nuts that every time you wanted to adjust an envelope in Ableton Live, you had to go over here, click on a bunch of random stuff until it would open up. It never felt intuitive to me and made me kind of never really utilize the Ableton Live envelope curves to their maximum potential. Now this is very satisfying though. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, awesome. I'm enjoying having these controls down here. I feel like I'm gonna use them more than up here because my eye never goes up there. But my eye goes down here a lot. So that's gonna be nice. There's little subtle design updates everywhere. Looks good. All right, I'm digging it, I'm digging it. Everything seems to work pretty flawlessly, even on a project that has, what, 112 tracks. So that's pretty good. Yeah, I think I'm gonna stay permanently in Ableton Live 12. I see no reason to stay in Ableton Live 11. Let's see in terms of stability and bugs and stuff. I don't really know yet. We're gonna see how that works out. As a good habit, I'm not gonna uninstall Ableton Live 11 just yet, in case for some reason there's some crazy bugs that come out. But overall, it's giving me every reason to be really optimistic. Very impressed, Ableton. Well played. So let me know in the comments what you think of the new Ableton Live 12. If I've missed any features or you have any questions, leave a comment below or also just say something nice to me in the comments. Go follow one of my music production courses on courses.underdog.brussels. Like the video, subscribe, hit the little bell icon and until next time, stay producing, be good to each other, take care.